in this video we are going to go through the PowerPoint on multi-view drawings. What are multi-view drawings? Multi-view drawings are used to describe three-dimensional objects in two dimensions. Most everything we have in our lives are three-dimensional objects, but a lot of times we draw things in two dimensions to make it easier for production purposes. Normally our multi-view drawings include three views. We typically do the top, the front, and the right side, and we'll talk about that more here in a minute. There is a standard arrangement of the views used, and we will talk about that, and I'm very specific, and so are the other instructors, on these being done correctly. This PowerPoint has some stuff about manual drafting. We will just skip over anything that has to do with manual drafting. After you learn about multi-view drawings, you are going to create the drawings with CAD, specifically AutoCAD. So here are the standard arrangement of views. If you look on the right-hand side, we have an object and the object shown as an isometric or three-dimensional drawing. If you look at the blue surfaces, those are the surfaces that if I look down on the top of that object, those are the surfaces that I would see. If you see the red areas and look at the front view, those are the surfaces that I see. And if you look at the side view on the right side of the object, that is what I would see. You see there is a hidden line. Here is an opportunity for some extra credit. If you are watching this video and you hear me say these words extra credit and send me the name of the video and the, the time that I say the words, you will get five points extra credit. There is a hidden line right here. That's because this surface right here is behind this plane. So that is an indication of that plane being behind the surface that we're actually looking at. Orthographic projection. Orthographic projection and multi-view drawing pretty much mean the same thing. You may hear other people call it orthographic projection or you may hear it referred to as multi-view drawings. Again, the reason it could be called orthographic projection is because the views are obtained by projecting lines of sight to a projection plane. And we will talk about the glass box, and the glass box helps us to visualize our views. If we look at the same object and we take the red surfaces and we use like a window or a view or an imaginary plane to project that on, we take that three-dimensional view and make it two-dimensional. Again, this is a description of how to pull that information out. Here is the glass box. In reality, there are six sides to this box. So we could have six views. Again, we typically don't need six views to do our work. If you look at this glass box and once you have all the surfaces projected on it and you unfold the box, that is how we get a placement of our top view, our front view, and our right side view. If you notice the drawing on the right hand side, the top view and the front view align and the right view and the front view align. Again, these should all be in alignment as those surfaces and planes attach to each other. The projection technique, it involves three principal planes or coordinate planes oriented at right angles. The front view, which is shown in a frontal plane, the top view, which is shown in a horizontal plane, and the side view, which is a profile plane. In mechanical drafting, we typically call it the front view. In architectural drafting, we might call the building, if we're looking at the front of the building, the front elevation. So those terms, again, can be used interchangeably. Same with top view and plan view. Typically in mechanical drafting, you call it a top view. In architectural drafting, we call it a plan view. The side view can also be called an end view, a side elevation, or an end elevation. Typically, again, in mechanical drafting, we use the term end view, and we typically say right view or left view. In architecture, we're gonna say side elevation or end elevation. As I mentioned, there are six views possible for any given object. The height is shown in the front, the side, and the rear views. The width is shown in the top, front, bottom, and rear views. 
The depth is shown in the top, side, and bottom views. Again, with our glass box, if we take it and we fold it out completely, the diagram over here on the right indicates how that box folds out. Right in the middle, we have our front view. To the left of that, we have the left view. And to the left of that, we have the rear view. We typically don't need a left and a rear view. If we go back to the middle view and we go up, that is our top view. And if we go down, we have our bottom view. Again, typically we don't need a bottom view. And then to the right is the right view. So you'll see the L shape on the right are the drawings that we typically use. How do we project between items? The next slide will show a demonstration of this. Typically, you're going to have a miter line drawn at a 45 degree to project measurements. The miter line meets projection planes at a point between views. The circles and arcs located initially in views where they appear naturally. If we look at this diagram if you notice we have a horizontal line and we have a vertical line our drawings are spaced equally apart from those lines where that intersection happens we have the miter line that they talked about that was at a 45 degree let's say for example I know my front view I can project lines over to get my right side view. But to get the lines going this direction, I have to come over, hit the miter line, and drop those lines down. So it looks a little more complicated than what it actually is. A lot of times you don't even have to set up the projection because you know dimensions, and especially with CAD, we can just input those dimensions. But this is the way that you would go about projecting if you are struggling with what a view looks like. Again, the way we represent the items, we're going to have object lines, which are going to be our outlines of the surfaces, holes, radius, different elements like that. Hidden lines are going to be things that are behind the plane that we are looking at. This is the front view of this object. There is a hole here in this surface. Well, when I'm looking at the front view here, I don't physically see that hole but I need to represent it with hidden lines so that people know that there is a hole there. So when they're looking at this view here in the middle, they know that that hole relates to these hidden lines. Anytime we have a center, again, we need to have a center line. Right here, we have a hole represented, and again, it has a center line in it. If it did not have that center line in it and I could not see the hole in another picture, I wouldn't know whether that was a square opening, a round opening, a hole, or whatever. Again, it's very important that on holes we represent it correctly with a center line and a center line in this case. In your annotation tab, and we'll talk about this more in the next part of the video, you can, next to where we learned how to do the centers for holes, there is also a center mark that you can pick two of the hidden lines and it will place this line in there for you. So that is a nice feature of AutoCAD. Types of straight lines. We have horizontal lines, we have vertical lines, we have inclined lines, and we have oblique lines. Horizontal lines, that's obvious what a horizontal line is. If we look on this diagram, this surface here is a horizontal line. We also have vertical lines and again if we look here that is going to be a vertical surface. We have incline lines. That's what this is where it's sloping back to that top surface from the bottom to the top. Again that's represented here in this picture. The oblique lines. This is where it gets a little trickier. We have it sloping back plus we have it sloping in this direction. So if we look at DF, which is right here, we can see that oblique cutoff there. So those are the types of lines that we would have. Horizontal lines. These are parallel to the horizontal plane and one another plane and one other plane, perpendicular 
to the third plane and shown true length in two planes. This sounds pretty complicated, but it's really actually pretty common knowledge. And when you get into drawing, this will become a lot more clear. Vertical lines parallel to frontal and profile planes, perpendicular to horizontal plane, and shown true length in frontal and profile planes. Again, that's kind of hard to follow in words, but graphically, it's much easier to understand. Incline lines. These are parallel to one projection plane. Incline and foreshortened in other two planes. If I'm looking at a sloped surface from the front, it is not going to be the true length of that sloped surface. It's just going to give me the top and the bottom of that surface and it's probably going to be foreshortened. Oblique lines. These are neither parallel nor perpendicular to any projection planes and they are foreshortened in all three planes. So they are not going to represent their true length in any of the three planes. That is why we do auxiliary drawings where we can show those in their true length. Projecting angles. True size projected when plane is parallel to a projection plane. Foreshortening occurs when the plane is inclined or oblique. Right angles on inclined planes project true size on two planes. The next thing we have to do, we have to decide what is the best view and which direction for our part or our piece to make it the most descriptive. Typically, we want the front view to have the most detail in it. We want it to identify contour and shape. We want it to identify natural and functioning position. We want to arrange the views to minimize hidden lines. So that's the first way we're going to look at our object is to take that into consideration. If it is a part that is normally a certain direction when it goes into place, that's probably going to be your front view. But one of the most important things is we want to minimize hidden lines. Consider space requirements. Top and front view typically for long, narrow objects. Front and side view typically for short, broad objects. Selecting views. Choose between two equally important views unless space or other factors prohibit. Choose the right side view over the left side view and choose the top view over the bottom view. So again, orient your object to where you get the best views. In this course, in most cases, I'm going to tell you which is the front view, the top view, and the side view. When we have cylindrical objects, we don't need to do three views because two of the views, the top view and the front view, are pretty much identical. So all we need is one of those views and a side view so that we know that the object is round. We would know the object is round by the center line in most cases, but again, we need that right side view to know that. The object on the right, we can get by with one view. And all we have to do is note the thickness of the part. So we don't need this side view over here because that really doesn't give us much more information and it takes longer for us to do it. If what I always tell people, if you're uncertain about how many views you need, make three. It takes longer, but you don't want to leave out detail. If it's a cylindrical object or a flat plate, I would only make two or only one. Again, you don't want your boss coming to you and saying, you spent extra time drawing this view when it wasn't necessary. So again, you have to think it through thoroughly before you ever start drawing. Order of visibility for coinciding lines. Sometimes we may have a hidden line and a center line in the same place. So we have to decide which one we want to show. We can't show both because then it most of the time will become a solid line and it can be very misleading. The visibility order is visible lines, or in our case we call them object lines, are the most important lines, and they are typically a solid continuous line. Then hidden lines, because again a hidden line is still indicating something on the plane of the object. It needs to be noted and shown very clearly. 
cutting plane lines. This is where we make our cut lines when we're doing sections, which we'll talk about in a few weeks. Center lines, break lines, dimension and extension lines, and section lines. If I see on your CAD drawing that you've done a hidden line and a center line in the same location, I'm going to mark that off. You need to put the hidden line and not put the center line. So again, make sure you're doing that correctly. Removed views. Sometimes, like the picture on the right, if we were to try to dimension that little inset on that part, it might be very hard to read. This might be a very tiny part. So we'll do what we call a blow up or a removed view where we can actually put the specifics of that dimension for that inset in a larger view and it makes it easier to read. We will do these a little bit farther down the road when we get into dimensioning and such. Fillets and round drawing practices. The one on the left is the improper practice. Even though there is not a distinct line where that fillet meets at the bottom with the base, we need to still show a representation of that line. So again, the one on the right is the standard way to do it, and the one on the left is the incorrect way to do it. These are radial features. This gets a little bit confusing. If you look at the A in the top left, that is the true projection of that part. And you can see it's very confusing on the drawing. So what we do on radial parts is we basically draw one side correctly, like on example B, we drew the left side correctly and we just mirror the other side. Again, it's not a true projection, but the true projection is too confusing to figure out anyway. The same with C. If you look at D, they have indicated every single hole. If I were to look at that, that would tell me absolutely nothing. But if I look at E, it's a little more clear along with looking at C as to where we're actually looking. Again, the same with F. If you look at G, that is a true projection. It's odd looking. So again, we basically draw one side correctly where you have the vertical rib going up to the top and then we just mirror it down even though in reality we don't have that on that side. Orthographic projection methods. There is first angle projection and third angle projection. Third angle projection, the frontal plane located between viewer and object the views projected forward to frontal plane and third quadrant, and views appear in natural positions. This is what is used in the United States and Canada, and this was shown in a previous slide. It's also represented in this slide. If you look at first angle projection, it's opposite. So I usually don't even show that because I don't want to confuse you, but I do want you to know there is a first angle and a third angle, and here in the United States in Canada, we use third angle projection. So this concludes the PowerPoint on multi-views and the next video we will get into actually doing your assignment.